Today on The Joy of Editing, it's Topaz Studio 2, My Creative Toolbox, episode number 68. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. Thank you for joining me today. I'm pulling out Topaz Studio 2 again. Today, I'll use a filter I don't use that much in Topaz Studio 2, and that is the Glow filter. It's really cool, as you'll see here in a minute. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Here I am inside of Photoshop. I duplicated my background layer, called it Topaz Studio 2, because I never like to take my background layer into a plug-in. I like to keep the original background layer intact. All we need to do at this point is come up to the Photoshop menu, click on Filter, find Topaz Studio 2, click that, we'll launch Topaz Studio 2 and get started. And here we are inside of Topaz Studio 2, which I like to refer to as my creative toolbox because you can get so creative with it. Now I understand they no longer make Topaz Studio 2, there's no updates for it, but if you love Topaz Studio 2, let me know in the comments section below. Again, maybe Topaz will look at this video and say, you know, these people really love Topaz Studio 2. Maybe we should consider Topaz Studio 3. Wouldn't that be great? I can only hope. Let's get started. I'm going to come up here and click Add Filter. And we have this whole list of wonderful filters here. And we're going to use the glow filter. So I'll click on the glow filter and let's see what we can do. Now you'll notice here we have primary and secondary. I'm just going to use primary. I'm not going to get real into the weeds on this filter, but we have two different types of glow, a light glow and a dark glow. I'll be working with the dark glow. We'll start out with glow strength. So I'll drag this slider over to the right and you'll notice the image starts to get kind of blurry, but don't worry about that. I'm going to drag this over to right there, 0.27. I'll start to drag drag this primary effect sharpness to the right. And when I do, watch another slider will magically appear. So I'm going to start to drag it to the right. You see that primary electrify. Now, what's that all about? You'll see here in a sec. But first off, let me pull this a little bit further to the right. Actually, a lot further. I'm going to take it over to right there, 0.75. But here's where the magic happens when I start to drag the primary electrify to the right. See those lines starting to come into the image? And you can go real crazy here. I don't want to go real crazy. I'll just go a little crazy right there, 0 0.08. And now if I take the primary effect sharpness and give it more or less, increasing or decreasing the sharpness. So again, I'm going to take it over here to 0.75. And now that that's sharpened up, you know, we could work with the primary electrify again, maybe increase our line strength, whatever we want to do. But I'm going to leave it at 0.8. Oh, 08. You see this bar on the right side? I'm going to click and drag down to the bottom because we can do some more sharpening. And here we find a sharpness adjustment and a sharp radius adjustment. What I'll do is I'll take the sharpness and watch the image as I drag this to the right. See how it's getting very sharp? And you could get as aggressive as you want here. I don't want to go real aggressive, but I'm going to go to right there, 0.10. Now we could take the sharpness radius and make it wider like that. I don't want it like that. I'm going to take it down to like right there, 0.03. If you want to see a before and after, hold your space bar down. There's your before. Release the space bar here is after. I'm using the glow filter to give me this line drawing look, which I really like. Now, there's a lot more things we could adjust here in the glow filter, but I'll save that for another video. For now, we're going to come up and click add filter because I want to add another one of my favorite filters, and that is the precision contrast filter. So I'll click on that. And what is really great about this filter, it breaks contrast down into different ranges like micro areas areas of contrast, low, medium, or high. There's some lighting adjustments here. There's an equalization adjustment as well as color. I'll start out with micro, but watch the image when I start to drag this to the right. See how those lines are really coming out? This is interacting with the glow filter. And what I want to do is take it to like right here, 0.35. And now let's work on low. I'll start to drag this to the right. And I think I'll take it over to right there, 0.75. Now let's work on medium areas of contrast. I'll drag this to the right and I'll take this over to right there, 0 0.29. Now you see the area in the background here, some of the leaves back in here. Watch what happens when I take the high contrast slider to the right. I can drop out a lot of that stuff in the background. And I'm going to take this over to 
right here, 0.73. And I think that's all I'm going to do here. We do have this equalization button. We can go for a low equalization, a medium, and it affects the lighting of the image, and here is high. But I think I like it on medium. Just let your eye tell you which is the right one. But that's all I want to do here. Let me shut off the precision contrast by clicking on this eye. Here's without precision contrast, and here it is with precision contrast. Isn't that cool? And now if I hold my spacebar down, we started out here. I'll release the spacebar, and now we're here. The last thing I want to do is just to tone down the center of these flowers. I believe that's called the pistol of the flower. So to do that, we'll click on Add Filter, and we'll click on Basic Adjustment. And with the Basic Adjustment, we can adjust exposure, clarity, shadows, and highlights, and so on. I'll just use Exposure, but before I do that, I want to click on this button right here. This takes us into the masking mode, and right now I have a white reveal all mask on this image so if you click the three dots right here we can click invert and invert that that gives us a black hide all mask and i'll click on the brush button and what i want to do here is take the transparency and drag it the whole way to the right that'll give me a white brush and can you see my brush right there we can adjust the radius of the brush the size the softness it's pretty soft and what i'll do is just paint over this light area right here in this pistol right over this area on this one and on this one i'll paint right up in here here down on this one we'll paint and you can see the red overlay when i'm painting and now i'll paint right here and now if you look at the mask over here you can see the areas that i have painted in white and so now i'll click on the basic adjustment right here and now when i adjust the exposure it will only affect the areas in the mask that are painted white so i'll drag the exposure to the left and just darken those areas up and i think i'll go over to right there minus 50. Now, let me shut off the basic adjustment by clicking the eye. Here's before and here's after. It just tones down those pistols a little bit. And now I'm really happy. I'll hold down the space bar one more time. Here's before we started out here and now we end up here. And I really enjoy this result, a very creative interpretation of this flower image. And now let's send this back into Photoshop, come up to the menu, click accept, and that'll send us right back into Photoshop. And we're back in Photoshop. Let me shut off the Topaz Studio 2 layer. Here's before and here is after. So there we go, Topaz Studio 2. My creative toolbox had something a little bit different today, but I like the result. If you have Topaz Studio 2, there's a link in the description where you can download this stock image and give this edit a try. Well, there it is, everyone. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you did, please give it a like, share it with your friends, and if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe, click that bell notification, click all so that you'll receive all notifications, and then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll get notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.